Hi, I'm Dr. Rich O'Neill. Welcome to Cycle of Health. About 150,000 ACL injuries occur in the United States every year. ACL tears are common in athletes that play high intensity sports and often require months of rehabilitation and recovery. In our first story, we hear from a young female athlete who suffered an ACL tear and the steps she took to get back on the field. When you step on that field and you just, like everything hits you, like all your mentality is just out and you're just playing. My older brother, I grew up watching him play sports and, and excelling in those sports. And so I kind of wanted to do like everything he wanted to do in soccer, lacrosse. And you're just out there playing. And it's just the joy of that, I think, that I really love. It was my junior year and I, I was about halfway through the season playing soccer. I remember I kicked the soccer ball at the same time a girl did, and I just felt a pop in my knee. So I knew something was wrong, like, then. And my mom, I remember her telling me, like, she heard my scream and was like, oh no, like, she's never screamed like this before, ever. I, like, knew I was gonna be out that entire year and I wouldn't be able to help them move on to like sectionals or anything. And so like that night, um, we were all like super worried about it and I iced it all night. And the next day, like we went to Dr. Petropoli. We treat a variety of all orthopedic musculoskeletal problems. I was also uh, fellowship trained by Dr. James Andrews at the American Sports Medicine Institute in Birmingham, Alabama. ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament, and there are four main ligaments in the knee. It's an extremely important ligament. All the ligaments are important, but the ACL is most important for cutting and pivoting sports. So when the ACL tears, unfortunately, the knee starts to give out, and when the knee gives out, or it's a quote-unquote trick knee, then every time it gives out, not only is that maybe annoying or it bothers the patient, but it can start to tear up other areas of the knee. So females are definitely more at risk for ACL tearing, about five to 10 times more common than males. And there are, are several reasons for that. Some are not controllable, some are controllable. So females tend to have a little bit wider pelvis than males because they have to have babies. And that actually makes their knees a little bit more knock kneed and when you're more knock-kneed versus bow-legged, you're a little more likely to put your knee in a position where the ACL may tear. In general, uh, both um, nationally and worldwide, as well as my own experience, I think all types of injuries that we're seeing um, have shifted to younger uh, patients. I think the reason we're seeing that is kids are playing at a lot younger age. Um, they're playing year-round. They may play multiple games in the same day, three, four, five games. No professional athlete plays three or four or five games in the same day. So why do we have our kids playing three or four or five games in the same day when they're not even fully developed? One option is just leave it be. Like not, not do anything and just keep continuing life. But I wouldn't be able to play like soccer and lacrosse like as intensely as I wanted to. And then the other option was surgery. And so those are pretty much the only two options. And so I, wa I wanted to play soccer and lacrosse and keep continue playing them my whole life. And so we went for the surgery option. Not everybody needs to have their ACL reconstructed. I would say that most athletes um, who want to play a sport like soccer, football, volleyball, basketball, lacrosse, anything where you're cutting or pivoting, uh, I, I tend to encourage it because their knee is usually going to give out even with a brace. I mean, we do try bracing and bracing can help, but there's still no brace that will completely prevent that knee from giving out. So most of those um, athletes um, we will operate on. 
the day after surgery, I went into physical therapy just to start moving it around. And it hurt so bad. That was, I think, the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. They just started like moving it around and it was so horrible. The surgery is one day. I mean, the hard part is actually the rehab and that's the most important part. And that's what the, where the physical therapists and the athletic trainers and the strength and conditioning people come in. How you been? Good, how are you? Good, how's life? Good. Nice. Yeah. Wanna come back? Sure. After an athlete has been seen either orthopedically or by a primary care doc, we'll get a script to come in. Uh, they'll come in, we'll do a thorough evaluation, review their history, kind of understand what makes the athlete tick, what we need to get them back into doing. At that point, we'll kind of put our hands on the patient and look for what we call impairments. And at that point, understanding the differences of what they need to do and to what they can do. So we'll take them through some functional movements and identify weaknesses and we'll build upon those, understand what's causing, generating the pain, and at that point, um, specifically curtail a treatment regimen to get the athlete back on the field. Nice. There was a trend to get the athletes back as soon as possible. You know, coming back into sport as soon as, you know, six months or sooner with a lot of these um, athletes and as we learn more we realize that we can't fit, uh, we can't change the biology uh, those tissues need time to heal and now we know if you are able to wait a couple months after the six month mark to about the nine month mark you reduce the risk of re-injury rate by 51 percent at that point so this is just a basic box jump yeah. uh, we're going to want to control her knees going inward so that's going to put more stress on the ACL so we're looking for you to go straight down straight back up, and then a nice soft landing. So we want to keep those knees, hips, and ankles in perfect alignment so we don't put any more stress on the ACL. And every day it was feeling better. Every single day we got another thing done. So what we're finding is the pendulum is shifting back the other way where it's really more like nine months is probably your minimum requirement to get back to one of those types of sports. It was in the spring of my junior year and I was starting to like run more, starting to do things more and then um, I had an appointment with Dr. Petropoli and so I went in to see him. He said I was cleared. I was just so happy I was able to play like soccer and lacrosse again. Starting on defense, senior number 24, Sarah Bentley. Your last home game, not your last game, your last home game. Yeah. Let's go out strong. A lot of team play today. Get that first possession. Woo! Let's Put go, the guys. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. David, David, I think there's a spectrum of uh, exciting things uh, in the future uh, regarding uh, preventing, uh, diagnosing, treating um, uh, ACL tears and I can almost guarantee that the biologic part of things is going to explode in the 21st century and help us maybe even grow a new ligament back or grow a ligament in the lab and then not have to make a big incision to harvest the graft. So we're gonna be seeing some exciting things as far as the biologics goes as well. I think just keep working hard because that feeling in the end is really, it's all worth it to me.